Hello everybody, this is a special episode this time of uh, The Last Resort Gaming because I just bought a Reclaimer and uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, we've all seen the photos on the site I'm sure but there's just stuff everywhere on this thing. It really is a, a Swiss Army Knife tool chest and it's huge. What is that? That must be the cockpit. It's the only glass I can see on the front so I circled that. That it must be the cockpit kind of offset there. Then you look at these uh, all around the top there, we've got all these turrets. Turrets everywhere. There's one, there's a man on the top. The two on the side are dualies. There's two on the back that are manned. Then you've got the tractor beam mounts. Then you've got all this stuff. The retractable claw. The um, deep space surveyor drones. And you also have a manned ship. It's called a cutter. But I'm, I'm thinking that because it's um, an Aegis... That it's it's uh, it's gonna be just like what's on the Idris, right? I don't know if you guys have seen that. I got that included here. So grab a cup of coffee, or a hot drink, or a cold drink, or any sort of refreshing beverage, and sit down because we're gonna take a little while here and talk about this awesome new ship, the Reclaimer. So yeah, side view here. Those blue things, those aren't searchlights. Um, I actually think those are supposed to be the tractor beams. It mentioned that there's three of them, and I think you'll use that to hold car to hold wreckage in place while you you know stabilize with the claw, and then you would fly in to kind of do something. Oh, this is this is actually a really good picture right here. I really like this. Now it's kind of showing the claw in motion, but you get a good idea for how big the ass on this ship is. I mean, this thing is has a huge rear end. Uh, this picture doesn't show it quite so much. This is an earlier one. I don't even think that the side uh, engines are on this one. They might be, but they might be obstructed by that uh, that arm there. This is something I was just—I was actually farting around with. I took somebody else's work and was kind of doing some scaling here to try to see. Now my interest in this—I do have the size right. Now this one, this one is right. This one, everything is actually right. You can see the big reclaimer all the way down there at the bottom is bigger than the merchantman. Uh, by quite a bit. <laughs> and that's a uh, C-17 Globemaster. Alright, so let's take a look here. Okay, here we go. So we look at the re uh, Reclaimer spec sheet. You're gonna see that the mass on this is, is pretty it's pretty big. Um, but it's actually less than half the size, or just a right at about half the size of a hull C, of a mist hull C. And it's got six TR-5s on it. Six way more than anything else at that at that size it's not a military combat cap ship maneuvering thrusters they're TR3s um, and there's there's eight of them so uh, you know I don't I don't know I, I, I would say that's probably pretty reasonable I don't think you're gonna be uh, popping your eyeballs out of your head turning around on that but, you know, I don't know what, what you're really going to be doing in that anyways. Evasive-wise, you just need to be able to move. Uh, the power plant, they seem to have that set in stone that it's going to be two uh, size sixes. That's also a very heavy-duty power plant. Uh, supporting up to a size six shield. Which is, the I think, the heaviest we've seen so far. I don't think, uh, unless the carrier's got a size eight or ten. Um, one additional equipment slot. And then, see, the class nines are uh, TBDs. So I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Um, you know, I don't. I guess I don't know how small they want to make them. I don't think they need to make them that big. It's it's not a warship. One class five. I think that is the uh, the top turret. I think the C9s. The C9s are probably going to be, if I had to guess, the two what look like searchlights, but I think that the tractor beams on the chin underneath the cockpit and then I think those other two are going to be what's on the back end of the ship which I think I, I, those might not be manned turrets they may be automatic turrets but they they definitely are a turret mount on the tail for protection um, and then up front it's got two class 4 size 5's which are turret mounts that can mount uh, two gun slots kinda like the Hornet turret from that's my understanding I could be I, I may not know exactly what I'm talking about there but so far that's what that is and you look at the freight units the cargo capacity here is 2500 that's that's very impressive um, I'm really glad that I jumped on this ship the, the more that I look at it like at the time 
it, I, I didn't even buy it out of... I bought it without hesitation, but I didn't even look at it like... Like, I wasn't in, in shock. I wasn't, I wasn't completely just overwhelmed with seeing something new and exciting that I needed, that I got it. But I, I got it just thinking like, hmm, I've seen all of these other ships come out. Um, the only thing I've bought so far is an Avenger. And I got that way back in... End of January 2014. Um... And I actually only became aware of Star Citizen, believe it or not, in December of 2013. So I was sitting there. I mean, it was, it was almost a year ago, and knew I wanted to back, but wasn't sure what I wanted to do to do right away. And um, I guess I should have known. I, I I didn't know at the time they weren't going to throw the Avenger in there. I knew it would be close, uh, but they didn't make it into the Arena Commander. So. Anyways, I got that, but this this thing just for for whatever reason I, I had to have it, you know. Obviously, what well, at that point in time I couldn't even get a caterpillar if I wanted one. Um, and I'm not I, there was nothing about the constellation I didn't like. It's just I figured you know they're everywhere, so I'll get one as soon as the game comes out. There, you know, I've seen enough videos. It wasn't something new to me, but this thing can carry so much. It it carries twenty thousand. It says scrap units. Which is also a, a freight unit, but it, apparently it's only for like scrap debris. You compare that to a Starfare, which is 900. And again, this is the only other specialized vehicle they had really announced up until the second tier of, of vehicles. Because if you look at, at one of the spec sheets for this, it has like an accumulation nozzle, and it, it's able to, to to suck in, I guess, you know, helium three or whatever that is that they use for a fuel source. Um, so the cargo space. It's still it's still larger than a freelancer, um, but it's that's I'm sure that it carries probably like 1,400 in, in this in fuel only. But it's also a much smaller ship, and it's if you look at it, it's really only about a fifth of the mass, and about three fifths of the of the size, less than that even. It's right about half the size. Caterpillar. This is this is the adjusted caterpillar as far as I know. This is as of uh, October fifth. So I'm looking at this, and this again is much shorter. Now the 3,200 freight units. I don't know if that's stock. That could be with an expansion module. That could be total upgradable. Is that they don't have an asterisk, so I'm assuming that that is stock now, which would mean that it's greater than a reclaimer. I mean, heck, it's, that's greater than a, than the Constellation Taurus, but we'll get up to that in a second. But, I don't think that that, I, I, I have a hunch that there's a possibility it might not be stocked. But then look at the, look at the, <laughs> it may not, it, it doesn't have nearly any of the mass, you know. It has like, about a seventh, or an eighth of the mass, but it only has two TR5s. And, and it's eight thrusters or TR2s, so... I mean, I I still think the reclaimer is is might might have some get up and go, but I don't I don't think it's going to maneuver for anything. But the crew is the same. That's the other thing I wanted to, I wanted to, to touch on. They did hint at the fact that the reclaimer is is going to be big, but it's not going to be something that you can walk all around it. There'll be places that are dedicated to um, the salvage portion of the ship. But I'm still thinking it's going to be at least a double decker. They've already announced that the a what is it the 890 jump. Is going to be a double decker. This thing has got to be a double decker, but it's probably going to feel a lot more, uh, you know, industrial utilitarian inside. So moving on here, yeah, like I said, the Constellation Taurus that actually has the, the four TR fives, and its stuff is a TR three. So you can tell. I mean, that is that's that's a maneuverable ship. That's you know that thing can can maneuver and slow down and speed up and get around. But only 1,900 freight units, and that's a dedicated Constellation freighter. So definitely not touching the Caterpillar. Um, now it beats the heck out of a out of a Starfarer, which, if you look at it, the Starfarer is is you know a lot bigger, a lot more hulking around. Uh, so you can definitely, I think, you probably be able to get two jobs done in the time it took a Starfarer to pick up cargo, go fill up on the fuel, and drop it off somewhere. Also, I think the Starfare has a smaller crew. I actually might be four people. Let's, let's check that out real quick. That's going to bother me. Yeah, a smaller crew. Two people. Constellation 4, and you get the offensive output. 
The Andromeda only has 1100 freight units. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. Weapons, weapons outload is uh, out, a little bit higher. Um, and the shields, what are those? Those are size sixes on that. Yeah, so the Andromeda, the, the Taurus does have a slightly lower defensive loadout as well. Now the Orion, and this is all speculative right now. The Orion, and this is one of the, this is probably the first RSI ship that I'm really anxious to see what it looks like. Because I'm, I'm thinking it's going to look somewhat ugly, like the Reclaimer. But I, I don't care. You know, and no matter how it looks, it's. I, I also know that it's, it's probably going to have some RSI uh, accents, features, something that's going to that's going to keep it in with the Aurora and the Constellation lineup because they're also supposed to be like current ships, or, or they're the, they're the current you know annual release of those ships. Whereas I, my understanding of the Avengers so far in the game is that you know they don't make them anymore. They're an older ship; they're out of production, so the ones that are there are there. There may be some that have never been flown that are, you know, still completely covered in cosmoline and grease, but that out of they're out of production. Unless there's a variant, they still make maybe. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. You look at the Orion. The Orion is reminding me of the Starfarer. 940 freight units, but look at the crew. Eight people. I think it's. But the mass. The mass is actually very close to the Starfarer. Nowhere near the Reclaimer. Now, there, like I said, the Reclaimer's actual area you can walk around in, I'm sure, is going to be probably smaller. But the Orion is, is must have a lot of workstations, or things that you need to do that require more than one person, or something simultaneous. The size is not much, and not really any bigger than Starfare. The mass is close, a little bit more, I think. And we look at the, uh, the thrusters on that, that's a slow hulk and brute. Six TR5s. And only TR2s. Yeah. Now that's got an S7. That's a super heavy duty shield. And they haven't even touched as far as what they're thinking about the loadout on the guns and turrets and extras are going to be. Lastly, I have the whole C on here. Now look at that. 9,000. 9,000 freight units on a five person ship. And that's actually, you know, almost two and a half times as long. No, it's about one and a, one and three quarters as long as a Reclaimer. So it's quite a bit bigger than a Reclaimer. In fact, I'm going to go back to that and show you that. But that's only TR4s. That's a full ten of them. Ten TR4s and eight TR3s for maneuvering. Uh, they haven't... They had, I don't know what's going to be going on with that. You know, they, I, I don't think they'll have man turrets. Maybe they will. Probably automatics. Um, we'll see what that looks like. But look at the mass! One and a quarter million kilos. I mean, that's that's crazy. That's just crazy. So yeah, here's what I was gonna show you. This is this is not my work. This is someone else's work. But this is a great release that they, that they've put out. Um, what they what they've done, and I, and I can't vouch for the accuracy on the terraformer here that's in the background. Um, But I will say that the rest of the vehicles, because I kind of checked them against some other stuff, the rest of the vehicles should be good to go. Um, so we're going to zoom in here. You can see there's the Reclaimer. They've got that in there. There's a Javelin Destroyer, the Idris. Now the whole sea is blocked out. They haven't released anything for that. Um, but you can see compared to a Freelancer, I mean, that thing can definitely hold a Freelancer or two or three. And it said that a constellation is no problem. It said if a, a full, a fully, a, a fully empty reclaimer can completely consume um, a full constellation full of scrap. So, you know, that's going to go inside of there. The Starfarer is a little bigger, Merchantman, and then they also the person who did this put the Redeemer in. I like that. I like that it gives you an idea of with the wings deployed because all all the ones I've seen so far have been this. Uh, Either the cutaway or the or the silhouette is with the wings closed. That's with the wings open. And to me, it looks. I'm gonna actually just back out a little bit here. Zoom in up here. That looks a lot, kind of like the crawler, the Van Duel boarding ship right here. Obviously, it doesn't quite have the 
the the same angle there, and I don't know that those are engines on the side. They could just be like, you know, struts. But whatever it is, the shape of it is kind of similar. Um, a little more symmetrical, man-made there, and it gives you. I have. I actually. I did the color coding on these. I wanted. To, I was trying to break down the uh, the manufacturers. Now, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. After this last run, uh, Aegis has pulled up to be in the lead. Um, more there are more Aegis ships out there than there's the Idris, the Reclaimer, the Redeemer, which is official now. Um, the Avenger and the Gladius are all Aegis ships and the Retaliator. So Aegis, Aegis, I think, has more human ships in game than any other manufacturer um, as far as the, the, the pilotable ones. Uh, Origins kind of fallen behind, and they may have more variants out, but the 300i, the M50, and the 890 Jump, um, and unless we see something else from them. Can't wait to see what the Orion looks like. I'm I like, I really do like that they took all of, all of the old developing uh, groups that, that Chris worked for or ran or, you know, um, co-managed, whatever, directed, how uh, they went back in and have integrated those as the companies. But I knew, I knew that up until now, there was no ship named the Orion. And that was always a classic of his from uh, Privateer and I think another game that he had a, a, on Orion ship. So I knew that it was going to be something heavy duty, industrial, um, or, or service related. But it's going to be our mining vessel and I wonder, I wonder what it's going to look like. I'm anxious to see that. Uh, yeah, also the, the, Car the Carrick, the uh, Anvil Carrick. At first I wasn't really interested in that. Um, in fact, when they, when they just had the... Um, Community vote on what what the on what tier uh, what what kind of class ship we wanted to see revealed next. Believe it or not, I actually picked the um, the passenger vessel because they've already announced what the some of these spec types are going to be, and I, and visually I'm not as interested as seeing some. I want to see something new, and we haven't seen anything so far really that's going to be a dedicated civilian passenger craft and I feel like since they're not beaming anybody from planet to planet at the end of the day you still got to get your butt on a passenger on a on like a commuter line or on a you know a regular public transportation type line buy a ticket and and you got to take the ride you know and, and you'll get off at a terminal somewhere and you'll be at your destination and other than the merchantman, which is a band who, you know, can craft it, unless they were going to say caterpillars. Um, but those are drakes, so, you know, they, they, we still have to flesh out some of the, the fiction here. But, you know, unless they were going to just inc include a modular, like if you were if you were in a story mission and you were going to be on a constellation, and then it's a, it's a freighter class with my hands doing the quotation marks, but you're just flying in it like it's a civilian, you know, 747. But I, I, I didn't think they were going to do that. I don't think they're going to do that unless they do that with freelancers. But again, you know, even with all the different freelancer uh, versions, none of them are really feel like anything, anything more than like a double-engine sob puddle jumper or something that you could hold maybe 35 to 45 people on. Um, not in those freelancers. So that being said, I, I'm interested in seeing what the civil, what more of the civilian market that just probably wouldn't have guns at all, would probably have countermeasures and and shields, of course, and that's about it. You know, really wouldn't carry any guns at all because if you have a hull full of passengers, you're not going to be you know turning around to do a gun run on your attacker. You're just going to be getting out of there and calling for help. And so I feel like even if even if it's not pilotable, I want to see what they are. Just like all those ships that were in the that are in the traffic pattern, flying around, you know, while you're while you're running around New Horizon at the raceway, I want to know what the who makes those. Um, even if it's even if they you know they have enough manufacturers out there, they're already they could pick one. They could just or they could invent them. You know, I'm sure some of those vehicles are probably only available for purchase and primarily used domestically. You know, on a certain planet um, or in a certain system. You know, where where they're they're a hit in the hometown. 
Um, so we're going to back out here. These vessels down here, I don't know if they're supposed to be... Uh, what is that? Trevarian? But then we have these down here. The one, the, the one that I had, uh, it, it's really bad for showing you what the Xi'an ships look like. Yeah, it was this one. This is the Xi'an bomber, and as you can see in this one, it's officially now 25 meters tall, and it's it's actually a little bit taller, tip to tip, than the height of the Banu. It's actually is like as tall as my my version of the Reclaimer up there. But looking back, <laughs> we can see now this thing is tiny. Look at it. That's the Vulper, the Vulper, however you say that. So there's the Cartu, the Vulpers there. That is their concept. I I would call that like a light destroyer. Um, I mean, if that thing flies around vertical like the Dark Elf ships in Thor, uh, then I would say that's plenty big enough to be a match for a javelin. It would take like probably a half dozen to ten reclaimers to tear one of those apart. I mean, look at that. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it might be this guy or this guy is going to be one of those um, Trevarian ships that we can uh, we can actually fly. But I'm just I'm just I'm just thinking here. Whew. But the Carrick, I'm actually interested to see the Carrick. It's a charting ship, but it's very small, um, about the size of a constellation, probably with a slightly smaller. Uh, Framed in that without all the uh, engine nozzles on there, so I I actually don't know who who has played Wing Commander uh, Wing Commander Saga remake that they did in the Free Space Two engine, but I look for it to be kind of like the Davy the Davy Crockett or the um, what was the the Jim Bowie was that kind of like Spec Ops Recon Craft, and it 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 kind of made you feel like it was about the size of. of a constellation maybe 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 uh maybe more about the size of a free of a, of a large freelancer like the size of the redeemer a gunship but i'm i'm interested to see what the more what the variants are for that because they're for the releasing it to the public as an exploration vessel um i just like to see what it might have maybe it has maybe it has something to do with smuggling the herald is the other ship that i'm really interested in you know the m50's fast and flashy and i and it's really fun to fly but the Herald I think is going to be a really useful ship uh, with all of the electronic type of stuff where it can it can it can transmit and receive encrypted data it can it can flash dump encrypted data or like flash dump and somehow beam transmit it at the same time that's going to be cool I think you're going to see like you know you're going to see courier groups pop up that are going to have a Herald and 2F7C uh, or 2F7S ghosts, um, you know, run an escort on that guy. Uh, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be really cool um, to see what kind of specialized outfits. Just like I, honestly, the ships that I'm looking for now, I, I I definitely need a cutlass, and I want a cutlass over a freelancer because because it can chew through stuff and because it can it can it can get into other other ships. I think it's it's more designed for that than a freelancer would be although I really think that I like the freelancer cockpit um, that reminds reminds me of a lot of uh, more like on you know, the cargo pla the planes that we see now you know, the, the Airbuses and Lockheed's and McDonnell Douglas's and stuff like that so but I think a Herald's going to be a really useful ship um, especially if as long as it can keep up with like a 300i or a 325 um, it can go a little faster than that. I think we're gonna we're, you'll have good results with it. But I, I'm actually looking at one of the Hornet trackers. I'm interested in that to be used with the Reclaimer um, to kind of fly around with the drones or to protect the the manned little cutter. Which to go let's go back to that other picture. This guy right here. Now this is what they've already have confirmed is going to come with the Idris. Uh, you're gonna use it for at least one mission in the storyline of the of the Squadron 42 campaign, 
but I like it. Like, it, I just really like it. You see it without the little pod attached there, which either maybe is something that comes off of a ship or something that you take out and people can get into. Um, that's got the same side door as a Aurora Constellation to me. It looks like one of the RSI pods. You could probably put that underneath of a Mustang or anything else. But that ship is like, you know, that's an extremely short range. You know, that's just, it's a snub. Now, it might not fit in the Constellation Andromeda Bay or in the Phoenix Bay. Uh, but again, because it's an Aegis craft, but it looks like it can connect to an RSI type pod or whatever the universal type is. But those legs, which I'm assuming, you know, if it's anything like what the Gladiator is, the Gladiator, if you've ever looked at that, the legs fold up into the wings. I think that those 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 flat feet fold up and then seal up against that, and then I guess that, that goes forward, and that's your thrusters. But if you look at it, yeah, with no with nothing underneath, that's a pretty cool little craft. Like very small. You know, it's like sitting in the in the crane box of a crane hoist in a in a factory. You know, with, with but you've it's just like being in a little operator's box. Um, I think it might be kinda cool to fly. I don't know how fast it's gonna go. As long as it as long as it goes like maybe, you know, 80 or 90 meters per second. I think you you know you could at least avoid something with it, but that is a really cool looking craft. Um, and I'm and I uh, I have a hunch, just a hunch that it's that or something like that that's going to come with our Aegis Reclaimer. Um, definitely after after taking a good look at that, that is small enough that they could probably hold one or two of those on there. Um, my biggest concern is that I won't be able to land anything else on the Reclaimer. I I'm I have no idea what they'll change, you know, after seeing what happened with the Idris, anything could happen. But I was so intrigued by the capacity and the function of that ship um, that I didn't hesitate to go ahead and, and, and go ahead and uh, get one. So all that being said, I look forward to seeing what develops, as I'm sure we all do.